So growing up, my idea of a successful person is someone who drives a 3 Series, a C-Class or an Audi A4. And then when I started working and I saw my salary and I saw the prices of all the 3 Series, the C-Classes and the A4s, I realized I'll never be a successful person. But luckily, the German makes decided that they wanted to make people feel like they can touch success. And they introduced the compact executive sedan. And what we have today is the Audi A3 sedan. This is something that I think one day I might own to make myself feel slightly successful. The front of the A3 sedan looks handsome. You get this creased bonnet and then this huge black grille that doesn't look out of place, unlike its buck tooth competitor. A very nice sporty silver front lip here. And this fake vent here, I wish it were real because it looks kind of good until you go up close and realize it's fake. Yeah, it's, it's a shame that this is not real. Oh well. Let's take a look at the side profile. Ouch, it's very hot. While most petrol heads would prefer the A3 hatchback for its heritage and you know, the rallying thingy, I think most consumers would want to project the image that they are a responsible adult or feel like they're a responsible adult and then they'll go for a sedan. And I can't fault them, the A3 sedan looks pretty good from the side. It is not as adventurous in its design language compared to, let's say, the BMW 2 Series. But I feel that this car is understated and this design can last. You won't get sick of it in 3 or 5 years. In fact, I think yeah, in 10 years, this car would still look pretty good. The Audi A3 sedan multi-hybrid is priced at $169,000. The 1.5 litre turbocharged engine produces 148 brake horsepower and 250 Nm of torque. The 7-speed S-Tronic transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 in 8.4 seconds. For more details on the Audi A3 sedan or any other car, head on to sgcarmart.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. So in the rear, you get kick sensors. Woo! which reveals 425 litres of boot space. What I like about sedans is the boot is usually nice and deep, so you can pass the anti-trolley length test and the luggage test. For the hatchback, you'll get 380 litres. You'll get a bigger opening for sure, but definitely not as deep as this, and you cannot take the anti-trolley in the hatchback version. What else do you get in here? Some tether hooks and a net, but uh, you can't knock the rear seats down from the back you have to go to the sides, but you can knock down the rear seats. I'm not going to show you because I'm tired. And I'm tired of doing these videos for free for you. And all you do is complain. If you're not happy with our videos, go to another channel. Wait a minute. No, no, please stay. Please subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon. Okay, to the, to the rear seats. I love you all. So in the back seat, this is my comfortable driving position. I'm 1.8 meters tall. As you can see, there is a little bit of knee room left. Foot space isn't fantastic because I think I'm hitting something up front already. So I'm kind of like bunched up at the back here. Head, headroom is barely there for me. Um, and there isn't any tie support because it, the bench here is shorter than I expected. There are rear aircon vents, thankfully, no climate control, but I guess this is a small car, it's okay. And what else do we have here? An armrest with cup holders, you know, it doesn't have that awesome flip open cup holders in the more expensive versions of the Audi cars. And I suspect you'll leave this armrest down most of the time because if you want to have someone sit in the middle, uh, good thing is the, the seat, belt, seat belt receptacles don't jut into my butt. The bad thing is, look, look at my head space, there's no more head room and my leg is eating into the side passengers as are my shoulders. So this car is best left for two adults at the back. For two adults, it'll be comfortable. The windows are nice and big, so you don't feel claustrophobic. The 
driver seat and the passenger seats are these integrated sports seats. So actually, visibility for me at the back is terrible. I can't see what's in front. I have to do this to see what's in front. Yeah, so I'll just look out the nice big windows to the front seat. So in the front of the Audi, it feels nice. First, let's talk about the seats. There are many adjustment options, but most importantly, there is lumbar adjustments. So once you get everything dialed in and suited to the contour of your body, it can be very comfortable. I must say that the sport seats have these bolsters that the contour here just juts out a bit too much and it affects my usual driving position, which is to rest my right arm on the door and my left arm on the armrest here. So it juts out and I have to move it in front. So it's a bit weird. But if you're someone who got used to just resting your arms on the bolster itself, it can actually be quite comfortable. So it takes some getting used to. And for the cabin, you know, for the instrument cluster and everything, it looks very stylish. A lot of people have already mentioned that the aircon vents remind them of the Lamborghini Urus. I like them not because it looks like the Lamborghini, but because the aircon vents are slightly higher, higher than the steering wheel. And what this does is air flows directly onto your face. It doesn't have the steering wheel cut airflow. I don't know why automakers don't do it this way. This actually makes so much sense. So Audi, please continue doing this. And if you look in front, the instrument cluster is fully digital. And in this day and age, when you're buying a luxury car, you expect everything to be digital. And it is. So everything is legible, easily understandable. Everything can be adjusted easily from the controls on the steering wheel. Speaking of the steering wheel, I would say it's nothing special. You know, there's no D-shaped steering wheel and it just feels all right. I, would, I wouldn't say that the leather feels particularly luxurious, unfortunately. Moving on to the infotainment system, touchscreen, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is available. It works perfectly fine. And aircon controls, very important, are physical. Uh, I would call these levers more than buttons and they work perfectly. And they, they give a nice satisfying click. Doesn't feel cheap. Um, oh, and here is where you do your drive select, you know, driving, uh, selecting from sports mode to eco mode. I don't know why they put it on the left side. Is it because uh, in Germany, everyone drives here, so it's easier for them to reach here? Yeah, I wish that they put it on this side or at least on the steering wheel so that if I need to overtake someone at the flick of my finger, it's either here or just here instead of here where I have to, I, re I literally had to reach out because as I'm driving, I'm like that. And then I had to reach out and it's not very convenient. Yeah. All in all, I would say the build quality in this car is great for the price you pay. There are soft touch materials, but there are also plastics here and here. However, I must say the plastics and the build in this car feel solid and robust. Something you can't really say for certain other luxury brands where everything looks very expensive, but then when you go and touch and feel it, it feels very hollow. This is very full, robust, good. Yes, so the only thing left to do is to drive this thing. Let's go. Ah, where's my belt? Beam. Before we test drive the Audi A3 sedan, let's talk about buying used cars. Many of us have worries that we might buy a car with underlying problems with the engine or the gearbox or the drivetrain, and these problems can't be detected when we go for that 20-30 minute test drive. So what can we do? Well, we can buy cars with the SG Karma used car warranty. This warranty covers the car up to 12 months and for repairs that have to do with the engine, the drivetrain or the gearbox. So the next time you are looking for a used car, do consider dealers that offer the SG Karmat used car warranty. More details in the description box below. So what is it like driving the Audi A3 sedan mild hybrid? Under the bonnet, you get a 1.5 litre turbocharged engine, which produces 148 brake horsepower, 215 Nm of torque, and you complete the Sentry Sprint in 8.4 seconds. So this car is by no means a fast car, but with 215 Nm of torque, 
actually merging into the first lane is no problem at all. But when you do mash the throttle, the the engine kind of sounds like it is it's a bit raspy. It's not a full bodied groan. So this is not the type of car that you buy thinking that it's a sports car. No, it's not. And I appreciate the mild hybrid system because while on an expressway, I find myself coasting quite a lot. That means the engine shuts off and the car is moving on its own momentum and helped along by the mild hybrid system. And I'm not even trying, the, the car is doing it itself. And at certain speeds and at certain revs, the car actually goes into two-cylinder mode. The engine is a four-cylinder engine, but it can shut off two cylinders to help you save even more petrol. And to that end, I'm getting 6.7 liters per 100 km on this car, which is pretty good. So you think that this car is all about, you know, saving petrol and being comfortable, but it becomes quite evident quite quickly when you get onto the road and you go over some bumps that this car's suspension is actually also set up for you to take corners quickly and confidently. And this car is very planted around the bends. So it sacrifices a bit of comfort for good control over the bends. Steering, when you put it into dynamic or sports mode in, in, uh, to most of us, the, the steering is actually quite heavy. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most communicative, but I for this car, I'll just put it into comfort or efficiency most of the time. As for driver assistance features, there is cruise control, but it is not uh, adaptive. There is lane departure warning, but no blind spot monitoring. So these are little things that you need to take note of. All in all, I feel that this car is a car that you know, is quite comfortable to drive except for the, when you go through bumps. Other than that, yeah, it's pretty fast free. I like it. Yeah. So is it a will buy, won't buy, or go try the Audi A3 sedan mild hybrid? For me, it is a go try. Um, at $160,000, I think this car is the most affordable out of its uh, counterparts in the other categories and this car is well built the interior is robust the drivetrain is not the best but it gets the job done it's peppy comfort wise the ride is a bit too stiff for me but that's because this car goes round bends very well so why is it just a go try i think when you're thinking of luxury german brands where all luxury goods in general you buy it because it kind of has to punch you in the gut kind of has, has to make you feel oh i spent too much money on this but it's so special and it's worth the money but i'm i'm half regretting and half enjoying what i just did i don't get this feeling in the a3 sedan i'm not saying that we should price this like two hundred thousand dollars like the two series grand coupe um, I'm, I'm trying to say that it makes so much sense price wise and, and the build quality build quality wise that it, it if it makes so much sense and I'm the penny pinching kind of person, why aren't I just spending the money on a bigger Japanese or Korean car, right? So I'm buying it for the brand for the unquantifiable word called luxury. And when I'm in the A3, there isn't that wow factor that punches me in the gut that say, yes, I'm willing to part with a lot of money for the luxury. Um, everything is built very, up to luxury standards. It's just, everything just makes too much sense. I don't know how else to explain. Yeah, so that's why it's a gold try. It's a good car. And perhaps when you get into this car, something will blow you away and push you over the edge to say that this is a car that you definitely buy. For me, it is a good car. You have to go try it and perhaps it will speak to you. So that's my verdict. Go try the A3 sedan mild hybrid. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comment section below. As usual, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really helps us. And also follow us on TikTok. Thank you for watching our review. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.